I did a set on Conan recently, and they groaned at a joke, and I said, I'm a good person. I have dark thoughts. I have dark jokes. A clean comedian you might like, Bill Cosby, check him out. You can separate a joke from who you are as a yeah. human being. I, I like an offensive joke. And some people hear, there's a, there's a conversation I have with a lot of comics. They hear a word and they're like, that joke is about that. And that's like saying the movie Taxi Driver is about taxi drivers. Right. No, it's not. It's, it's not, not at all. You know what I mean? It's like, driver. I did a joke about pedophilia. The joke is not a, the me saying, pedophilia is cool. The joke is making fun of it. Right. You know, or sometimes a joke could be as simple as a play on words, but it's not me endorsing something terrible. And that's, that's what people miss sometimes. And that's, I think, a trait of really dumb people. If a person doesn't like my comedy of the show, technically I'm ruining their night. And that's something I'm, that's something I want to do. I, I did an old, I've done old folks homes, but yeah. not old folks homes, but like retirement communities or like I've done country clubs and the people there are very old and you feel guilty bombing. Cause I'm like, I'm, I'm wasting your last two years <laughs> or whatever with, I'm wasting, you know, with my horse shit. You had two years left and I just took 30 minutes of it. Yeah. yeah. And, and it felt like longer, you know? <laughs> I had a long bit I did last night that's really offensive, and yeah. it's purposely offensive, and I think it's really funny. What's, the, what's, what's it about? I talk about the baby that got eaten by an alligator at Disneyland. Oh, Jesus Christ. And I said, I don't want to come off like a wacky right-wing nut job, but I do think if that baby was carrying a gun, he'd still be with us. That's how I feel, you know? <laughs> and, it, and it basically turns into a long bit, and it turns into a whole thing about a woman who hated me so much for that joke, and I read an email she wrote me, and I kind of yeah. break down why she was so offended, and I think it's a really funny bit, but I could see that there were, uh, there were two people in the front row, a couple, and they couldn't get past it. They really hated me for it. Right. And I, and they get, they, I think they think I'm just mocking a dead infant and his mother, and I'm not. I'm mocking the woman who, for some reason, is, uh, takes it upon herself to be a social justice warrior. Right, that was and, the and vehicle to get me. you to something much bigger. Exactly. Yeah. And, and <laughs> And look, that's fine. I, I, I come from a world where I don't like being politically correct. I want people to have a good time. I want to have a good time. When it doesn't go well, does it, can you get past it faster than you used to? No. I have no fingernails. I have horrible nervousness. Yeah. I bite my nails. I, uh, I panic. I think about the future in a bad way. I stress out i'm the exact same thing That's therapy the is therapy is important to me i'm i have guilty conscience yeah. I, i'm always guilty about something uh, i thought i had guilt but here's the thing is like jews think they have guilt but we've got nothing on catholics that's true catholics it's like Jews, we at least, at least our guilt is associated with our actions for the most part right catholics it's like they have they have a thought and they're like i'm going to hell and you're like for a thought. At least Jews got that right. Right. I think. The, the Jews aren't like, oh, I'm going to hell. They're just like, ah, I suck. I, exactly. <laughs> That's true. That's so true. Yeah, we just, uh, it's more like self loathing. You're totally right. Yeah, it's self loathing. And I also think um, dread is a big part of uh, being Jewish, at least for it's me. It's not it just like being Jewish, it's also being part of a New York, being like a New York Jew, too, because that's like, uh, you just think that the whatever you're going to do that day is the worst thing. Like, I'm like, I have to go to the DMV today. This right. is the worst thing in the world. And then you're like, oh, it's probably not the worst thing. Because I do that. Like, I, I just, this is a great example. I'm reading, I was reading this book on the Holocaust. Uh, it wasn't the Holocaust. It was during World War II. It right. was in Russia. And it was just war-torn Russia. And it was the most awful thing ever. As I'm reading it, I get off the train, put it in my pocket, go to the comedy club. The Knicks game is getting shitty reception. And I was like, my life is so unfair. You know, but it, yeah. it's like, then I get on the train, I leave, and I'm like, I'm in such a cranky mood. You know, the train's getting delayed. And then like, I'm like, this is, could this get any worse? And then like a homeless guy walks on, he's like covered in shit. And right. I'm like, it could be worse. That's like, it's such a common thing for me because I'm always on the train. Right. Every night, multiple times. And someone will come on, and they have, you can tell they have like the worst life ever. And if you're visiting, you're like, this poor person. But if you're a New Yorker, you have that cynicism where you're just like, again, yeah. another guy with no feet, you know? <laughs> it's like, enough. Does he have to be on my car? Right. I'm trying to listen to my $400 phone. Do you have to be giving your speech? 
Well, it's, it's funny though, but you can only live in your own reality. I mean, that's all you can do. Exactly. And, that, and that's the thing is like, I forgot who was talking to me about this the other day. I was talking to, I think, a comic, but it's like these, hor- these horrors like in, in, you know, that people dealt with, like starving to right. death. That's something that bodily we're prepared for. Like throughout history, we are prepared for that. We can deal with that. But then, like, when someone doesn't answer your text, you're like, what the fuck? I can't deal with that. We don't don't have a playbook for this. Like, we're supposed to feel. And our biology is like, we don't know how to deal with this. Exactly. We know how to deal with hunger, sadness, but your text is on you, man. Exactly. It's like the stress from this this technology, it's amazing. And obviously, like, we couldn't go back to... Right. But most of my anxiety is through these stupid... And then I'm, like, mad at it. I'm like, well, I have this amazing device, and I just wasted the day on it. Right. I feel dumber. I feel like I'm not I'm not giving my mind the reps anymore. Like my mind needs the uh, this is good for me having an actual conversation where I don't go on the internet or I don't do you know what I mean? Like yeah. cuz it 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 definitely heightens my ADD. It definitely takes it to another level. It it enables my worst qualities as I said. And then I just like you need like long reps to think, and because of these things, you're always getting to vibrate. You're always getting something. You just dude, it's all about the dopamine rush. Exactly. And I swear that's the worst thing. That's killing us because I'm like you. It's like oh, if I put something on Twitter or I put something on Instagram, and it's like, does anybody like it? I need to get that. I need to get that. Whew, that Twitter. Swell. Twitter's rough because here's my problem with Twitter. I say provocative things on stage sometimes because I think it's funny. Yeah. Not not because. I'm a terrible person. Right. And with Twitter, if you, I almost did one today and I thought better only, not because I didn't think it was funny, but because um, I knew people would misread it to what whatever their agenda is or whatever makes them angry. And even though you didn't mean it, you didn't feel like dealing with the bullshit. I, I just, I, it's <laughs> got to be so funny to me to deal with the bullshit. I, on stage, I'll say anything right, still. Right, right, right. But yeah, I don't feel like dealing with the bullshit. I, I, yeah. I just, I don't. People will get angry regardless. I date a comic, and she did a show on NPR. Right. And she's a joke about her mom uh, not knowing how to use her phone, basically. And it's a story. It's a really funny bit. And so she got these, like, two messages being like, you're ageist. And it's like, well, I mean, this is how I basically cheered her up. I'm like, well, if they didn't like your act, think about what they would think of my act. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you like my act. And she's like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> She makes fun of me because I'm such a grump. Like I'm a grumpy guy. So she's she's <laughs> like, you're you're so cranky. Like people don't. She'll. This is our thing. Is she says people don't know how cranky you are, and I say, well, people don't know how difficult you are. People think you're the sweetest person on the planet, and she is. But she's also like, I see her. You see, the, we're in a long distance relationship, so I'm not. When I'm with her, oh, it's really? usually yeah. I mean, you know. She's, is she on the other coast? Oh, it's brutal. Oh man, people and I have I have friends who are like, oh my, oh my, my, you know, because of our opposite hours, I don't see my wife that much or my girlfriend that much. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, every time I want to fuck my girlfriend, I have to go through airport security. I hate LA. Dude, I me too. Hate that city. It traffic makes me homicidal. The 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 energy of the city is like the stereotypes are pretty accurate out there. In a lot of ways. My take well on it was after college, I went out to L.A. and I was there for two weeks. And I didn't last because they apparently weren't handing out uh, writing jobs just on... You, you were know. expecting a writing job. I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to be a writer. And I just thought they'd be handing them out on the side of the freeway. But they weren't. You actually had to like, know people and do stuff. Yeah. And so I got discouraged real fast. And I regret leaving. But I remember one night I was at a bar by myself. And some people invited me to go to a party up in Malibu. And I remember, like, all right, this is cool. I'm meeting people. I'm going up there. And they're like, what do you do? I'm like, well, I'm a writer. Because in my head, I'm a writer. Next thing I know, they're throwing scripts at me, being like, what do you think? Can you pass this on? Do you think that, can you, can you work with this at all? And I'm going, oh, wait a minute. You think because I said I'm a writer that I actually have a job or that I'm not sleeping on my buddy's couch? You're right, totally wrong. Right. And I was like, fuck, that's what this whole town is. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of people. That's why every film noir takes place in LA because it's the fucking boulevard of broken dreams you know it's like that's what noir is it's like sadness and and things not working out and that's why they make great for great movies but not a great place to live New York to me is like it's there's a lot of disappointment and there's a lot of frustration like to me New York is ridiculous on paper it's too expensive the trains are too crowded it's too cold uh, in the winters the summers are too hot but then like for whatever reason it's like 
there's some sort of weird solidarity you feel like that closeness and that claustrophobia creates some weird camaraderie right and like you don't hate the people around you like you should. You're and in then it LA, together. you're spaced out, and you're just like, look at this asshole. Because you're in your car all the time, and you're right. too you're too isolated. I think that's the problem. Yeah, there'd be it, there was like a, a balance in between the two. Maybe it's Chicago. Maybe that's the balance. You grow up a little faster, probably, because you're on your own. Yeah. So you, I mean, I don't say that in like a cool way. I say that in like a it's like a necessity that you have to just figure things out. Your parents kind of let you. My parents kept me on a somewhat short leash, and I still did stuff that I shouldn't have done, obviously. You did have you, access to anything. Did you get in trouble? Yeah, of course. What was the worst trouble you ever got into? The worst trouble ever. <sighs> there was a lot. They took me to the ER once. That They were not happy. They I took you to the ER? Yeah, they used to do this thing. I don't know if your parents ever did something like this, but when I come home, <laughs> they would lock the door, and my mom would do it as if she like really... You know, she said, I just want to say goodnight, but it was like fucking TSA. Right. You know, she would, I would knock on the door, I'd be hammered, I'd be a kid, just hanging with friends, getting drunk, smoking weed. I'd open the door and, she, and she'd and she be like, oh, let me just give you a hug. And then she'd be like, you smell like marijuana. And, I, and I'd be like, yeah, other kids are breathing it on me. It was the other kids, mom. Yeah, they, they, they blew smoke on me. That's how they smoke, you know. And... Uh, and one night it was so bad. I remember I like passed out against the door and my dad opened the door and I just fell flat on my face. And he was like, you're drunk. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm really drunk, obviously. And uh, he, he freaked. I was so drunk that for some reason I said, he's like, what did you, uh, he said, what did you drink? And I, and I drank like, I smoked a lot of weed and I drank a lot of beer and that was why I was so, the combo right. just messed me up. But I really was just drinking beer. It wasn't that bad. But for some reason, instead of beer, I said brown liquid. So for, he thought I d dropped acid or something. So, well, I mean, look, to his generation, you say brown liquid and yeah. it means acid. And then he called a friend of mine because I saw my phone. He just took it out and he was like, let me see. Most recent call calls him. He was just as gone as I was. Right. And he said, what is Sam on? And for some reason, instead of beer, he said brown liquid too. Just by coincidence. But is that a term you guys used? No, we were just drunk. Because we you could have, yeah, but you could have asked me a thousand different, said a thousand times, say what you were drinking, and brown liquid would never. Yeah, have but come I up. wasn't in like a state of mind where I was connected. In yeah, any but way. you guys both said it, isn't that what you just said? Yeah, it was a coincidence. It was weird. That's a weird coincidence. It's a weird coincidence. Yeah. So they took me to the ER, and I was trying to say the whole time, <laughs> I'm just drunk. And then I remember we finally saw a doctor, and he was like, "Could you guys leave for a second? And my parents were like, "All right." And then he's like. You're just drunk. You've never broken Isn't a bone. Isn't that crazy? In my life, I've I'm never broken for wood, a bone. Man. I know. Well, that's wood. I think worst injury I ever got was uh, in high school. We'd play this deaf school as like an uh, exhibition game for basketball. Right. And it was just honor code by whistles because they don't obviously hear whistles. And I remember I went up to dunk, and this kid just yanked my arm down. I went down to my head, and it sucked. It was like a concussion. But that's like the worst injury in my life. Do you still play any basketball now? Like yeah, but up? I play in like uh, I play with my uh, small Asian roommate, so I get I win usually because he's he's tiny. Because he's small and yeah, Asian. Yeah. Well, I don't mean Jeremy Lin. He's not small though. He's I met Jeremy something. Lin. Uh, he was at my show two weeks ago. Oh, was he? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan. You're a he, Knicks fan too. Big fan. Yeah. He uh, he he's was in the Brooklyn, crowd and he though. was he was cool as hell. Yeah. Is he? Is he's with Brooklyn now, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did you talk to him a bit? Yeah, we talked for a while. I, I of course, uh, geeked out a little bit because he's the man. I love Jeremy Lin. He was the coolest. So, you're the Knicks. Let's talk about the Knicks for a second. Okay. How are yeah. you feeling about the Knicks these days? I mean, how do you ever feel about the Knicks? You you tolerate it and you are sad most of the time. I'm just drunk. <laughs>